Welcome to Commissioner's Corner. I'm Ed Wolf from Central Kitsap. I am the, the Commissioner from District 3. We have a lot of great interviews on schedule for today for Commissioner's Corner. Today we're going to talk to Wes Larson from the Sound West Group about real estate market demands and growth challenges in our county right here in Kitsap. Future shows will have other professionals in the real estate field, other professionals in the development field. But today, we're going to talk to, to Wes about real estate and development in our county. We're also going to be meeting and talking to Sheriff, excuse me, Gary Simpson, uh, and also Keith Gruelner, who is the Deputy Environment or the Director for uh, Environmental Services for Public Health District, Kitsap County. And we're going to talk about the role they play public health district and the sheriff's office in protecting our health and our safety and our welfare in our county. So with that, let's move on and let me introduce Wes Larson. Wes, how are you? Hey, fine. How are you, Ed? I'm great. Yeah. I'll uh, start out by saying I, I've known Wes for a few years. Wes grew up in Bremerton, um, not far up in the Norm Dix Government Center. Uh, ultimately grew, uh, lived in uh, Silverdale and went to uh, Seekai High School. Banking and international finance, I, New York, I think, mm -hmm. Wall yeah, Street, that's right. for quite a while, yeah. and then back to Kitsap. Local boy yeah. returns home. We yeah. feel pretty good about that. Yeah, so. yeah. actually, yeah, class of 1980, Central Kitsap, uh, and um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Silverdale, I, I lived uh, during the 70s and right across the street from what's now the Kitsap Mall uh, and the uh, Greaves Farm at that time. So a lot has changed uh, in, in my lifetime. and. Uh, Proud to be back in Kitsap. Uh, I, I did have uh, experience of working 10 years in New York City uh, uh, with international banking with Bank Austria. Uh, Actually, and, you're jumping um, ahead of me. Yeah. I was going to ask yeah. you, yeah. Uh, so the viewers at home would know, what is your background, yeah. and specifically, what services uh, would uh, Soundwest provide or Soundwest Group sure. provide in the yeah. county? Yeah. Well, I'm an attorney uh, and I have an MBA and uh, my background is in, in uh, international banking and, and real estate transactions. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, 10 years uh, in New York City and in uh, one of those years in Vienna uh, and uh, managed the uh, European desk. So we were, uh, or I was responsible for relationships with subsidiaries of European companies in the U.S. So that was a great job to have in, the 30, in my 30s. And I moved back to uh, uh, to Seattle, and then eventually mm -hmm. back to uh, uh, back to Kitsap County uh, about 10 years ago, and that's where we founded Sound West Group. Uh, Sound West Group is a uh, is a, a fully integrated uh, real estate company. Uh, we are uh, acquisition, investment, development. We have construction in house as well as property management, and uh, we differ uh, from other real estate companies mm -hmm. in that we do provide the full gamut of services. Uh, in uh, in-house in under one roof uh, uh, again including the construction uh, and we also uh, uh, are investor driven so uh, we have uh, a number uh, of investors who invest with us locally uh, accredited investors uh, who are uh, international investors international been, investors as yeah. well some of our largest investors uh, are from Asia uh, Thailand China uh, and uh, so uh, we currently have uh, in the pipeline or in construction actually uh, more than 70 million dollars of projects uh, here in Kitsap County. Would you repeat that again please? 70 million. Um, but we obviously believe it's a really good time, it's a good economy uh, and, and a great time for development. Um, those projects include uh, in Polsbo, Somerset, which is a 128 lot mm -hmm. uh, plat. Uh, which is now under construction. These will be affordable homes uh, in Paulsbo, two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollar range. So you can check that out. Uh, and where are they located, Wes? They're off Viking Way, the very north end of Viking okay. Way. Um, uh, so that's that's one project that's that's uh, in the works. Um, we're also building in downtown Bremerton, uh, Spyglass Hill, uh, which is Spyglass Hill comes from the Robert Louis Stevenson novel. Uh, Spyglass Hill being the most uh, prominent or tallest uh, hill on, on, on Treasure Island. Uh, but Spyglass Hill will be with, with uh, 80 units, actually 87 units now, high-end uh, apartments uh, uh, designed to, uh, to meet the demands of the millennial generation. About a five-minute walk from the ferry terminal uh, and, and just a few blocks from here, as a matter of fact. Down from my old office. Down from your old office, that's right. Uh, and then uh, we, we also have... Uh, when do you plan yeah. to... to Open spyglass. When will they? Uh, when will they be habitable? Uh, we're 
aiming for June, but, but as soon as we finish the, 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 for the top story, um, the fourth story, we, we expect to start leasing and then we'll build our way down. Um, but we also have some medical office and, uh, and we are currently uh, uh, working on a project in Silverdale, uh, that a little early to speak about, but, uh, and then in Seattle, we have a project. But you have this here. Uh, we do this here, yeah, this is our first building. It was uh, 2005, my, my, the first building I did with my partner, Mike Brown. Uh, it was the old medical dental building. Um, it it uh, uh, we re rehabilitated and, and uh, 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 refurbished this building uh, completely, uh, mm -hmm. top to bottom, uh, back in 2004. And we are now housed in the building as this Great Peninsula Conservancy. And, and uh, which you're on the board uh, of, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I am, and yeah. and also General Dynamics. So we've uh, General Dynamics has their local headquarters here, and so we have uh, uh, signature the building, the General Dynamics building. Um, and uh, we're really proud of this building. Uh, uh, great, great old building, beautiful old timbers and millwork yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Because uh, Kitsap County Commissioners represent the entire county, not just mm -hmm. Central District or North or South. Did you mention what you're doing at Paulsville? Are you able to, to mention that in uh, addition to the other? Oh, projects? yes, yes, yes. We have a, 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 another apartment project uh, at the north end of Front Street on Hosmark. Uh, and that'll be, uh, uh, well, we're, we're working through the due diligence on that, but, uh, but it'll have spectacular views, just like Spyglass overlooking uh, the marina. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you know, the emphasis is on, on higher end uh, uh, apartment living, which we think there's a paucity of here in the county. Okay, pretty exciting. And of course, West and Sound West is not the only, aren't the only developers uh, in, in the area. And, where uh, growth is happening in Kitsap County. Certainly. What's, speaking of growth, what's the buzz about uh, in Kitsap about market trends we're seeing today in real estate versus three or four or five years ago during mm -hmm. the recession? Certainly. Well, there's been a resurgence, a strong resurgence in demand in the housing market. Uh, single family housing, uh, uh, the inventory is down to two and a half months. Uh, uh, that's 35% year over year versus last year, which interestingly is a, is a greater uh, uh, decline or, uh, or tightening of the inventory than what you see in Seattle. Seattle was down 30%, we're down 35%. So the market here actually uh, is, <laughs> is as strong or stronger than, than what, you, what you hear about in Seattle. Is that why everyone's trying to move over here? Uh, and, and the commuter driven traffic we think yeah. is, is a big part of that. And, and, uh, uh, now in the housing rental market, it's even more so the case mm -hmm. because there you've had no new inventory come online in the last 20 years, and and now you've gotten uh, what were uh, what was a, a very uh, big part of the market that the single family housing rental market mm -hmm. uh, is is peeled away. A lot of those have been put back on the market for sale. That combined with no new apartment units coming on has created this. this uh, uh, sort of perfect storm of, of demand with a, with a, a, a constrained supply. Um, so we're seeing in our most recent market study less than a 1% vacancy rate in Kitsap County. As compared to Seattle? Seattle is, is 3%. And so that yeah, leads yeah, me into my, of my, uh, one of my questions and the, the challenges, if you could amplify on this, uh, the challenges that uh, the real estate market is facing today uh, because of the demands and because of the growth in Kitsap County that we know is just astronomical. Well, it's as, as you talk a lot about, Commissioner Wolf, is it's the it's the need to balance uh, environmental uh, with Very with good. the development. It's it's a need to balance the, the infrastructure, yeah. the need for 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 more and better traffic flow in the county, uh, those kinds of things, um, and and uh, you know the challenges really need to be answered. Uh, through cooperation between the county and, and, and uh, the public and the private sector. It also needs to be a spirit, a, a conscience and a spirit of, of, uh, of, of uh, altruism in the development community. Mm -hmm. The uh, development community needs to take responsibility for, uh, for those kinds of things. Um, the um, a regulatory environment also, frankly, uh, needs, needs reform and okay. uh, that's, okay. a, that's a whole other subject. That's, that's very helpful. So if growth is real, in Kitsap, and I believe it is, uh, what can the county do, what can private industry do to partner uh, in more, more depth in the county? I think public-private partnerships, uh, the Central Kitsap Community Campus provides an opportunity mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. where, where uh, private development can partner and, and help uh, the public sector attain its needs, uh, open space and, and uh, 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 meeting space and so forth. I, I think there is an opportunity to, to incentivize 
uh, smart development through use of new markets tax credits. Mm -hmm. I think the county mm -hmm. can play a proactive role in that. I think regionally we really need to think about ourselves as a Puget Sound region connected to Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, the jobs are in Seattle, affordable housing is in Kitsap. If we can somehow uh, build an alliance uh, between Kitsap County and King County, I'd like to see uh, the passenger only foot, uh, foot ferry uh, revisited and looked at from a regional perspective as something that can benefit our, our regional economy. That's another, another segment of passenger only ferries. Yeah. Um, Wes, you, you've given us, given the public tremendous information today about where we have been, where we're going in the real estate market and the development market. And I thank you for being here. We'll have some of your colleagues on in the future to give us their point of views, but I, I thank you for being here with thank us today. You. Thank you very yeah. much, uh, yeah. Commissioner Wolf. Thank you. So we, we've had a lot of good information to, to, to think about today from, from the growth pressures to the economic climate in, in the county. but. But also, I, I want to close at least this segment with, with thinking about how we balance these growth pressures with um, uh, the pressures right here at home, maintaining that quality of life that many of us moved here for. I know my wife and I moved here because of the, the quality of life. So I would say in closing, balance is economic growth and preserving our environment. I believe that can happen. I believe we will do that. And I thank you for joining us for this segment uh, with Mr. Larson and Sound West. Welcome back, viewers, to Commissioner's Corner. I'm Ed Wolf, Central Kitsap uh, Commissioner, as you know. Today we have with us Sheriff Gary Simpson. You may remember a couple of months ago we had uh, Madam Prosecutor uh, Tina Robinson, who talked about law and justice. And today we're going to hear about law and justice from the sheriff. Sheriff, welcome. Thank you. Nice Glad to, to be here. Nice to have you on Commissioner's Corner. Can you give us a little bit of background on your experience and, and uh, your, your experiences up to the election in November when you were just sworn in, I believe? Well, I've been with the Kitsap County Sheriff's Office for 30 years and fortunately to experience a lot of areas within the Sheriff's Office, starting out as a patrol deputy where everybody starts. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was able to do that for several years before I had an opportunity to be a Marine Services Unit Officer. Um, and I was a canine officer for about uh, six, seven years, so that was an interesting experience. I uh, spent just a short time in detectives helping them out with some uh, felony investigations. Um, and I've had an opportunity to uh, be an administrative sergeant, a patrol sergeant, a chief civil deputy. Uh, worked in the jail for a while when the jail commander was off to a, a school. And uh, under sheriff for a short period of time after uh, the, the primary, and here I am as the sheriff. Sheriff, is there any position you have not held in this department? Uh, the front desk, which front is desk. one I probably couldn't handle, uh, but I've, uh, I've enjoyed most of the things that we've done right. in the sheriff's right. office, which is, which is something I'm hoping to, to expand in the future with uh, career development okay. for all of our patrol deputies, is give them opportunities to see other aspects of the office that they don't regularly see. Fantastic. You speak about the front desk, but your organization is the, the front lines to our community, the, the very front line. So what, what's the role of the county sheriff? And if you can briefly describe the services that the, serv that the sheriff's office provides to our community. Well, I think that most people, when they think about the sheriff's office, they're thinking about the first line, first responders, the, the uniform mm -hmm. personnel that are in the patrol cars responding to the 911 calls for service. Mm -hmm. um, that's the face of the agency. Uh, that's the, the, the backbone of the agency and the, and the most amount of work that we do. The other aspects are uh, the detective division that does a lot of the follow-up mm -hmm. work, the mm -hmm. major crime investigative work that, uh, that takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, we just had a homicide here a few months ago, and I think it was March. It uh, took us five months to get to a point where we were age eligible or able to bring probable mm -hmm. cause to the prosecutor's office to charge the, the uh, uh, the suspect in that in that case. They do all that work behind the scenes. It's not something that most people see all the time. Mm -hmm. Our support services division is, is an area that, that runs our records division. Uh, they deal with a lot of paperwork, a lot of uh, coordination, our concealed pistol licenses, our writs, of, uh, our writs that have to be served. A lot of behind the work stuff that most people don't see. Mm -hmm. We have marine services unit that I talked about that I had experience mm -hmm. with, the canine unit, mm -hmm. our uh, student resource officer, out in the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a community resource officer does our community outreach uh, that, that goes out and helps with the mm -hmm. um, teaching the public how to be safe mm -hmm. and be in a lot of events uh, and, and showing the public who we are. Okay. How many 
uh, even if you have to guesstimate and don't have the document in front of you, how many uh, staff do you have in the sheriff's office? Well, one area we didn't talk about was also is the jail, yeah. and the jail has a substantial amount of personnel. I think they're in the area of the mid 90s to 100, um, depending on how many people we or mm -hmm. physicians we still need to fill. But uh, that's that's a big organization in itself. Mm -hmm. A lot of activity, a lot of coordination mm -hmm. with the uh, Department of Corrections and the prosecutor's office mm -hmm. and the courts. Uh, in our support services, I think we have about 35 personnel, and in the um, commission, police officers, mm -hmm. commission deputies, we have 118. Okay. Large, large staff. You interface regularly with emergency responders like 9-11, the fire districts, hospitals. Can you talk about the partnership that uh, the sheriff's office has with our, with our emergency responders? You know, we've, we've always understood the necessity to work collaboratively with the other first responders and other organizations that, that have social services mm -hmm. in Kitsap County. The fire department can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. We have to work together and understand their mission and they understand our mission so that we can, we can provide good public service to everyone, utilizing all of our, mm -hmm. our uh, services to the, to the best that we can. Mm -hmm. Let's transition, if we could, to nonprofits and, and other NGOs, non-governmental entities. I know that uh, uh, in addition to Ray Garrido and former police chief of Bremerton, Rob Forbes, you're, one, you're also on the board of the YWCA and have been for a few years. What organizations do you partner with, either professionally in your, your sheriff's capacity or privately within in the county? Well, it's, it, the, the police departments can't do it alone, like mm -hmm. I've said before. Um, we need the support of the community. The community needs to know who we are, and we need to know who the community is. A lot of specialty units or a lot of special interest groups, which is what our communities need, mm -hmm. uh, that are focused on cer certain services and providing certain care and, mm -hmm. and, and help to our, our citizens. Um, I, I try to get out and get involved with as many as I can to, to introduce myself, to understand what their needs are, but also to share with them what our needs are and our limited resources and, and what our capabilities are and where we need their help. Mm -hmm. um, I try to explain to people that we can't do this job alone. If you, if you leave your car running in the parking lot in the middle of winter to warm it up while you go get coffee and somebody drives off in that mm -hmm. car, how am I to prevent that type of crime? That's where everyone has to take a responsibility and step up and do their part. And that's, I believe, part of my role is to remind people of what their responsibilities are and how they can help us be effective in our law enforcement efforts. Working collaboratively with the nonprofits and the, the other non-governmental organizations. Yeah, and, and I'm also on the board of the Habitat for Humanity in Kitsap mm -hmm. County. And those are areas that I think are directly impactful to mm -hmm. law enforcement. Having homes and places, places mm -hmm. where the homeless mm -hmm. can go to, mm -hmm. to be safe and to live. Um, the YWCA, which focuses on the um, um, empowering of women mm -hmm. and uh, eliminating racism, I think is, is a very uh, important thing that law enforcement can assist with. That's why I, selected, mm -hmm. I was selected or, or joined that group or is willing to join that group. Um, they focus on domestic violence, and that's something we deal with every day. Sheriff, I, uh, when I was preparing my, my questions for you, the one thing I wanted to get out to the public uh, was What's the one major or couple of major changes that you are making or will be making as sheriff since last November? Basically, what's your focus? Well, I'd, I'd like to carry on a lot of the, the foundational things that, that Sheriff Boyer and Sheriff Jones had done over the years. And I think that's getting the public to know who the sheriff's office is. One of a, a just a tagline, if you will, that I've kind of coined is, is we want the public to know that we're people first and cops second. So we're trying to encourage people to become more engaged with the sheriff's office and realize that we're just not out there chasing down crime. We're also part of the public and we're part of the citizens in Kitsap County. I, I like that. I've heard you say that before. People first, cops second. I know how proud you are of your team, the team that you're putting together. You're before the Board of Commissioners or you're there every week either recognizing uh, giving awards or recognizing new hires or uh, recognizing very special, you have a new leadership team. Yes. Um, anything you'd like to add to your focus or your your transition? Well, I'm I'm yes, I am proud of the people in Kitsap County Sheriff's Office and the jail, the support staff, the deputies, to our volunteers, anybody that's uh, contributing to the cause, if you will. Um, I, I that's what I looked at when I looked at uh, running for office was what staff did we have and how are they mm -hmm. going to make this office successful. 
They are a good team, a good group, new under sheriff, new patrol chief, mm -hmm. people who have been in the agency long mm -hmm. enough to understand okay. where we need to go and what okay. we need to do. And I know they're going to carry off the mission. And these people are, excuse me, I'm interrupting, they're on the front lines and they deserve our sincere gratitude. And I, I, I know I mean that and many others. Lastly, let me just say that uh, um, Sheriff, or I should say uh, Police Chief Strand from Bremerton has had me on a ride along. Uh, I certainly look forward to a ride along with you in the, in the county to understand what goes on day to day and at night in the county. And I'm sure we'll do that soon. Um, thank you, Sheriff Simpson, for being on our show. And we'll be right back uh, with Keith Grillner uh, from the Kitsap Public Health District. You've got 15 seconds if you'd like to close. I'm just glad to be here and have an opportunity to share what the Sheriff's Office is about and yeah. let the people know who we are. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Today I have with me Keith Grillner, who is the Director of Environmental Health Division for the Kitsap Public Health uh, District, principally responsible for clean air, land, water, right? That is correct. But before I, I uh, jump in with, with Keith, uh, I'd like to everyone to maybe get a look outside. We're looking at submarines, we're looking at carriers, we're looking at the Olympic Mountains. People, when they come into my office, the first question they always ask is, how do you get any work done in here? And I usually say, that's a problem. So moving on to you, Keith. So, welcome here. I'm glad to have you here today. Um, we're going to have uh, just our own dialogue, and, and I'd like for the, the, the public to, to learn more about the Public Health District, specifically the Environmental Division that uh, you're responsible for. So can you start out just by telling us what's the purpose and, and the services provided by the Public Health District in your area? Sure. The Kitsap Public Health District, we provide a lot of services. Our mission is to prevent disease mm -hmm. and to promote and protect the health of mm -hmm. all persons at Kitsap mm -hmm. County. We do that through uh, two major division areas, the Community Health Division and the Environmental Health Division. Mm -hmm. And we provide services that range from restaurant inspections mm -hmm. to well drilling inspections to providing clinical services for people who have uh, communicable mm -hmm. disease issues. Mm -hmm. So that's generally the public that health is, district. That's correct. Uh, some of the programs that you oversee, and I mentioned earlier when we opened the segment, uh, land, water, clean, clean, clean air, water. Uh, can you talk about some of these programs and, and what you're doing to make sure that future generations have what we have or better than what we have today with regard to land, with regard to water, with regard to clean air? Sure. Well, for the Environmental Health Division, we have five major program areas, okay. uh, drinking water, septic systems, food protection, mm -hmm. solid and hazardous waste, okay. and pollution identification and correction. And the focus of those programs is to uh, prevent and reduce environmental threats to public health mm -hmm. from contaminated water, food, land, mm -hmm. or air. Mm -hmm. We do that primarily through the implementation and enforcement of regulations mm -hmm. that are passed down to us from the state or passed to us by the Board of Health, of which okay. you're part of. Okay. So a few weeks, thank you, Keith. A few weeks ago, I, I happened to tag along with your people, uh, one of uh, just experts in the field, the District Water Monitoring Specialist in Dyes Inlet. Yes. And through the Narrows. And they, they were out there testing and ensuring in good weather, I might add. It was fall. It was a beautiful day. Um, how do these programs work? If you could just br very briefly talk about that. Sure. The Pollution Identification and Correction Program, they do some really neat and unique stuff. And what they do is they monitor the county's surface waters to identify areas that are experiencing fecal coliform bacterial contamination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we identify those water segments with problems, we then have another team of folks that come in and do intensive inspections mm -hmm. and surveys of those areas mm -hmm. to identify the sources of the pollution and then we work within that regulatory framework I was just telling you about mm -hmm. to get those sources of pollution corrected. Very, very important. And I, as, again, I was impressed with the, the team that took me out to test, test the waters. Everything looked pretty good. I was very, very satisfied that day. Um, let me just close by saying to the public, thank you, Keith, very thank much. Thank you for having me. That uh, as county commissioner, I serve on the Kitsap County Public Health District Board. And, they're responsible for so much to, uh, to, to ensure we, we have a healthy and a safe place to live. And to, today's discussion has focused on, on one part of the health district's mission, uh, the environment, but they do so much in terms of health care, 
and prevention, uh, prevention services. So I, I thank you for that, uh, Keith, and uh, I'll close the discussion for now. This is Commissioner's Corner. Thank you. A lot of information has pre been presented today and how that folds into the, the bigger picture on how to not only address growth, but how to preserve and enhance our, our quality of life here in Kitsap. Uh, you've heard from different perspectives, different conversations today, and, and I hope this episode has provided you with much needed information as viewers at home. I know it has me. Balancing economic growth with preserving our, our environment is something we all need to consider, certainly I need to consider in future policy discussions.